Hello everyone, and welcome to your 86th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how we can accept file promises into our application. Now, a file promise is basically a promise that another application can give you, and it essentially tells your application that, hey, there is this file that I will eventually deliver to you, but I don't have it right now, so just take this promise, and then when you accept the promise, the other application will try to fulfill that, and generally that comes in the form of downloading a file from the web, or maybe it's on some slow external disk or something, but basically it can take some time, eventually get that file, and then it will deliver it to your application. This is different than, say, a URL that's on your file system already, right? So the common way that people accept images is they just are looking for URL types and if there's a URL that's on your um, you know, file path, basically, that's on your system, you'll accept that. But we should also be accepting our uh, file promises because there are applications that cannot just deliver you a local URL. So a file promise is something else we should be accepting into our Cocoa applications. All right, so with that said, the setup that we have here is I've already done a bunch of it, and a lot of this is already based off of Apple sample code. I will leave the links for the Apple sample code and also the GitHub page that you can find to download this application already done for you. But uh, we'll walk through a little bit of it here now. So there's a simple view controller, and the view controller has this view that is the view of the, the view controller. It's a subclass called image drop view. And then on this same view here, we also have this image view, and the image view is basically just covering the image drop view, and we're gonna use the image view to actually deposit the image into that there. All right, so that's the setup, and let's go ahead and look at our image drop view here. So I've gone ahead and set up a bunch of things, we'll talk about this delegate later, but the first thing we need to do is register for drag types. So anytime you want to accept anything onto an NS view, this is the crucial step that you need to do, which is you register the NS view for whatever drag types you want to accept. So the first thing that we need to do in our situation is actually tell the image view to unregister the drag types that it has. And this is a little wonky because it doesn't really look like the image view can accept it, but some types of image, NS image views can accept drag types. And so we actually need to tell it that the NS image view itself should not be handling any of the drag events. So the view behind that image view is our image drop view here. And now we need to set it up. So we want to register the drag types on the image drop view. So to register for a file promise, steps to do this are basically get the NS file promise receiver and get its readable drag types. So this is basically just registering your NS view to receive file promises. And we need to actually map this into a form of NS pasteboard type. So we need to take NS pasteboard, pasteboard type, and then we will just put the string that is, so all these readable drag types are in a string type, and we're just mapping those to pasteboard equivalents. All right, so once we've done that, the other thing that we wanna do is also, we don't wanna just accept file promises. We also should be accepting URLs, and so we can go ahead and accept file URLs on this as well. So basically what we should be expecting is that when we go to handle our drags, we should be looking for both file promises and file URL types. All right, so that's great. We've now told the NS view that it should be preparing itself for a drag type to be received. All right, so to test that we can actually accept or receive the particular types of things that we expect, we are going to expect that the dragging entered call will be called. And this call will not be made unless we actually register for these particular drag types. So to test this out, we could actually just put a little uh, breakpoint on here. Forget about the, the delegate stuff for now, just we're really just testing to see if dragging entered is called at all. And this will not be called if you drag something on that isn't actually registered to be a draggable type. So we can go ahead and test this. We'll go ahead and run our application. Let's switch over to uh, photos, for example. And photos will vend basically a file promise. And so we can kind of just verify here that that's indeed what we, you know, we're receiving a file promise at this point. Um, if we want to just test file URLs, we can drag anything from, uh, you know, the finder, for example, and that will 
also vend us um, file URLs if it's local. So uh, as you can see, we are good to go here. We are receiving the dragging enter types and without having this code here, you wouldn't be receiving those. All right, so now that we're actually uh, triggering dragging entered, what should we be doing with dragging entered? Well, we want to return the operation that we expect to do. So you'll notice that if I try my application, right, and I drag on an image, we notice that nothing actually happens. There's no real indication that we'd be able to accept the type, right? There's no plus button, uh, which is what we really want to change. So let's uh, basically override our dragging entered call here so that we can return the drag operation and we want it to show that we could copy if that is a valid operation that we can do. Okay, so uh, obviously I'm hang handling this in the delegate as it is. So let's go ahead and go to our view controller where the that is the delegate of this, this view that I've gone ahead and set up. So let's go ahead and implement our dragging entered logic. So in dragging entered, what we wanna do is we wanna just handle the expectation and what I want to do is just check to see if our dragging types are what we actually expect them to be and the way we can kind of do this it's not a probably a completely foolproof way but uh, what we can do is actually enumerate over the dragging types of the dragging info that's provided and so uh, at any time you're performing this dragging entered or the dragging entered gets called rather you're going to receive this NS dragging info and NS dragging info allows you to enumerate over all the items that you're dragging. And there's some ways that you can kind of filter this out. So first you can specify the supported classes and we expect them to be either a file promise receiver or a URL. And if it's not one of those, then we probably will just move on, right? Uh, other things that we can do are kind of filter out the URL types that we expect. So we're expecting only image URL types in this example. So basically, if none of these conditions are met while we're enumerating over the dragging items, we're not actually gonna call this block. And I'm gonna use this aspect of enumerate dragging items so that if I don't actually call the block, I'm going to just say that, eh, this, this drag is probably not for me. So how can I do that? Well, let's just uh, have a variable here for is valid. I'll set it to false initially. And then I'm just gonna call enumerate with the dragging info. And then in here, I'm just going to use both the dragging info. I'm not gonna care about the index. And then I'll use this little stop variable as well. So in here, if the, the drag is valid, I'm gonna basically set it to true. If we, if we happen to enumerate over anything, that means we probably passed one of our various checks in the first place. And once we find that it's valid, I'm going to set this little stop pointer to be true so that we stop enumerating over the rest of the content. And in this case, in this particular example application, I'm really only looking for one thing. We could limit it even further, right, if we wanted to make sure that only one thing was being accepted or something. But generally speaking, you should probably accept as much as you can in the drag. All right, so once we've done that, we can now say if it's valid, I want to verify that whatever is sending me the values, I want to be able to make sure that a copy is a valid operation it can do, right? So from our perspective, we're, we're fine with copying, but from another application's perspective, maybe it's not expecting that a copy can actually be done. So we need to make sure that what the, the sender is expecting and what we're expecting can actually occur. And so to do this, we want to make sure that the sender's dragging source operation mask, which is this NS drag operation, um, we want to make sure that in this mask, we actually have the ability to copy. So basically, we want to find the intersection of whatever the sender has with what we're expecting, which is a copy. And if there is a copy, then great, that's what we'll be able to do. If um, this thing wasn't valid at all, then we just want to return an empty, um, empty mask for the operation type. All right, so let's go ahead and run this again and just validate that this works as we expect. So I'm going to try and drag in a movie here. And we can see that the movie that I'm dragging in is not a type that I expect. So there is no plus, there's nothing uh, there. And that's, that's good. That's what we wanted. I'm going to try this with an image. So if I drag an image on, we can see that now there's a little plus button on this. So that's great. We, we now have a little plus indicator for our image. All right, 
Um, let's also go to photos just to validate that the file promises work. And we can also see that the file promises are working as expected there as well. Okay, so the very last step is to actually perform the drop operation. And so this also is going to, the, the sort of the entry point for this comes from NSView. So NSView uh, as part of the NS dragging destination protocol stuff is basically going to have this perform drag operation call. And this is the entry point for once we've gone past dragging entered, right? Dragging entered is just validating uh, the mouse appearance basically of what this thing should look like to do when it's uh, entering our, our view. But performing the drag operation is once the user lets go, what should happen? So we're again delegating this back to the view controller. And so now we're going to implement our perform drag. So perform drag operation, what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to enumerate over all the content and then figure out what we want to do with it. So we'll take the sender. Uh, I just need the dragging item in this instance. And uh, I could use the stop if I wanted to, right? Technically, we're only accepting one image, so I probably should just stop after the first image. But um, you get the idea. You could do whatever you want with, if you accept multiple images, then you could accept multiple things. What we want to do here, though, is I want to figure out uh, the dragging item and figure out what this dragging item actually is. So we can do dragging item dot item, and this is going to give me back the actual um, the actual type that it is. So in our enumerate call, we have these supported classes. And basically this item is going to be one of these supported types. It's either a URL or it's either a file promise receiver. And so let's figure out which one it is. And the first one, we're gonna just try to see if it's a file promise receiver. And we'll see if it is a NS file promise receiver, like so. And the other case, I'll go ahead and make that, is um, is going to be our file URL. And this is going to be a, uh, I guess we can just do the Swifty type of URL. And then we'll handle this uh, separately. And then lastly, we need to have a default case because basically it doesn't really know uh, all the valid types that we have, right? There's, there's not enough information in the type system here to actually understand that <laughs> these supported classes match only what we're expecting. So uh, we need to also have a default case in this example. Okay, so let's do uh, perhaps the simplest case first, which is the file URL. So the file URL, we're just going to call self.file or handle file, which was a method that we have up here. So this guy is pretty simple. It just takes the contents of a URL and then um, the, the async case will come in. Well, it'll make more sense in a bit. We don't really need the async case for um, this particular um, file URL because it's actually going to be on the main thread anyway. But we're going to just use this file handle file URL as our uh, main method entry point for handling image URLs. All right, so I'll go ahead and put file URL in there. Perfect. And um, let's go ahead and just try this as it is to make sure that we can handle fi file URL cases. So from here, um, anything that's on the file system, like I said, if it's not in the cloud, it should just be giving off a URL. And so if I drop this in, we can see very good, we have this file dropped in. If I try to go to photos, for example, and I try to drop in a different file, um, it's actually not going to accept uh, this thing because the first thing that we're trying to capture it as is a file promise. And so the file promises we haven't handled yet, but uh, let's go ahead and handle those now. So to handle a file promise, we actually want to do a few things here. So the file promise receiver has this method, which is receive promise files. And basically you need to receive the file, put it at a particular URL, and then once you have you know received it, then there is a callback to give you the URL once it's complete, or if there's an error, it will tell you about it. I've gone ahead and created a temporary uh, destination URL, and this is just going to be in the temporary directory that has um, basically whatever, some additional file path, and I create this directory so that I can put all these images in whenever I receive them. Um, you know, you could really put this anywhere. The nice thing about the temp directory is that it'll be uh, deleted after, uh, you know, two or three days or something. 
Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and take our uh, destination uh, URL. And then our options, uh, we don't really have any of these things, so we can just go ahead and delete that entry altogether. The operation queue, I also have a queue up here, and that's just a simple operation queue that's user initiated, basically not quite on um, user interactive level, but just something slightly below so that we're not blocking the main thread. And once we've done that, we can handle the URL or the error that we get back as a response. So if we get a error, and let's just do if let error gets error, right? So if the error actually exists, um, in my case, I'm just going to print out that, uh, hey, we have an error. And obviously, in a user-facing application, you should probably present something to the user in these particular cases so that they're not just wondering what happened. Um, but, you know, you get the idea, and you can do that on your own. All right. Once we've done that, we're going to, again, call handle file. And we have the URL. If we didn't get an error, we have the URL. So we're all set to go there. So in this particular case, right, we are receiving the file promise on a background queue. And that's why our handle file actually had this dispatch to main so that when we're handling the files on background queues as well, then the, you know it'll always work as we expect it to. All right, so let's go ahead and run this one last time here. So here we go, here's our application. We can see that, uh, let's try movies, they don't work, good. Uh, we can try images good, it works. We can go to photos and drag in this little recipe and good, it works as we expect it to. All right, so this is a very simple example of how you can accept file promises into your application. Again, all the source code will be on GitHub so that you can review it over if you'd like and you know take your time to kind of understand each part. This is also a part of Apple's sample code, so I don't wanna pretend like I made all this code here because a lot of it is actually just taken from Apple sample code and that sample code is a great uh, full working example of how you could sh you could fully use file promises but I think this example hopefully simplifies uh, the main cases that you need to know about so as a recap we basically register for the drag types that we want on the NS view that is expecting the drag types and then if it's a drag type that we registered as we'll get that information in dragging entered Dragging enter gives us the ability to respond to whether we should uh, basically accept that type and we can sort of change the mouse pointer to look like a copy, for example, if that's sort of what the user expects. And then lastly, if all that goes well, we when the user lets go of the mouse on top of your NS view, then we'll get that notification through perform drag operation. And we should handle all that drag, uh, the actual drag operation based on the files that we are or the class types that we expected right so we expected both urls and file promises and so we should expect those types in our uh, our drag types and then we handle them appropriately all right anyway i hope that uh, helps you understand how you can accept file promises into your application and doing so is an excellent way to make a wonderful mac application experience if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.